Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club and part two of the history of the gyroplane. This time we look beyond Sierra and the contribution of others prior to the Second World War. Westland first designed a five-seat enclosed aircraft in collaboration with the Sierra rotor system, the C-29. It was powered by a 600 horsepower Armstrong Sidley Panther engine before Westland then designed a two-seater in collaboration with French designer Lefebvre, this time powered by a 70 horsepower Pobjoy. Neither was successful and development on both was scrapped with the onset of war. The Sierra Auto Gyro Company had been financially supported since 1926 by the British engineering firm Weir and it was one of their scientists, Dr James A.J. Bennett, who, already Sierra's technical assistant, who became the technical director of the Sierra Auto Gyro Company upon Sierra's death. Weir, however, also had its own aircraft department, initiated to build de Havilland aircraft for the First World War. Its interest now lay in single-seat gyroplanes with smaller capacity engines with the intention to exploit a mass civil market for leisure and personal transport. Under Chief Engineer Cyril Pullen, proof of concept work was first undertaken with the Weir W1 and then the W2, both with fixed pitch metal two-blade rotors and a production run of 50 aircraft was planned. However, with the possibility of jump takeoffs becoming reliable, focus shifted. First to the adoption of a similar autodynamic rotor head by Sierra on its W3 auto gyro, before focus shifted again and we produced the W5, the first British helicopter in 1938, a product of a 1937 proposal by Weir to the Air Ministry after its abandonment of efforts to obtain the Fokker FA-61, the first practical helicopter designed by Heinrich Fokker, who had gained his experience through development of work on license-built Sierra C-19 and C-30 gyroplanes. At the outbreak of the Second World War, Weir suspended the operations at Sierra it becoming a shell company holding various patents, while Weir's helicopter program was cancelled by the Air Ministry in July 1940 to focus on what was seen as more productive war effort. In Germany, Fokker returned at least in part to autoritative design, with this the FA330, an observation platform designed for U-boat operations. This 1931 helicopter design, the Revoplane, was designed by Austrian-born Raoul Hafner. He was principally a helicopter designer who used gyroplanes as a means of proving helicopter design concepts. He invented cyclic and collective pitch rotor control, which he incorporated into his Hafner AR111 gyroplane, seen here. The alternative was the autodynamic rotor control of Sieva, where much work had been done by Dr. J. A. J. Bennett. Principal amongst its design aims was to simplify the task of piloting and reducing the possibility of mishandling. It was ongoing vibration and control issues with this rotor that had slowed Sierra design progress prior to his death, but the overall concept was ultimately perfected by Dr. Bennett. His C-41 was the Sierra design study submitted for a British Air Minister requirement for a naval helicopter in 1938. Its development ended along with the cancellation of parent company Weir's helicopter programme in 1940. Post the Second World War, Dr Bennett joined Ferry Aviation as head of its newly formed rotary section and his great faith in the auto gyro principle was finally realised. The control of the ferry gyrodyne was seen by Bennett as an advantage over separate cyclic and collective pitch adjustments made by the pilot. The interdependence of so many controls requiring coordinated adjustments was seen as a penalty in the aircraft's ability to hover. In the gyrodyne an attempt has been made to minimise this penalty by suppression of the collective pitch. The flight controls being 
stick, throttle and foot pedals, collective pitch change, being affected automatically. Harold Pitcairn was an American aviation pioneer and amongst his many projects he manufactured mail planes. Seeing the autogyro concept as a good match, in 1928 Pitcairn purchased a Sierva C8 and the American manufacturing rights from Joan de la Sierva for his autogyro designs. The PCA2, the first model seen more widely. Pitcairn, however, became frustrated with the Sierva autodynamic rotor control for jump takeoffs and designed a successful alternative of his own. This was incorporated into his PA36 enclosed design, as well as his PA39, which went on trials for the Royal Navy for convoy escort duty. The final significant player in the market pre the Second World War was Kellett. Kellett autogyros were licensed built Pit Cairn Sierra aircraft. However, he developed what was possibly the ultimate pure gyroplane of the era with the YO-60, produced in 1943 for the US Army Air Force to evaluate against the new Sikorsky R-4 helicopter for use in the observation role. In part three, we look at the crazy years of gyroplanes post the Second World War.